John? Yes, sir. Hi, I'm Randall Sullivan. Randall, pleasure. John Morbido. I've been told you have quite a story about what happened to you on the morning of 9-11. I absolutely have a story from uh, September 11th. Yes, I do. Somebody told me that what happened to you, some people think, could be a miracle. Uh, I believe that to be true myself. I, I was right in the middle of the Trade Center when the uh, building was collapsing and I survived, so... That sounds incredible right there. Uh, I think, uh, you know, there's probably a thousand firemen that have similar stories to what happened to them that day. Mine's just one of them. Uh, I mean, you could probably talk to anybody and they'll let you know exactly what happened to them, but I can tell you my story if you'd like to hear it. How, how many people lived in, who were inside that lobby that day when the building came down? Uh, initially, we were the first to respond, a uh, ladder company 10 and engine company 10, and immediately we got the ball rolling and uh, gave a signal 1060, which means a major emergency. That gets the ball rolling down with our dispatchers. They began to send everybody, but we were the first ones on the scene at the time. And uh, by the time the second plane attacked the second building, I'd say there were a good thousand firefighters down by the Trade Center. Were you at the station when the first plane hit? I was in this firehouse when the first plane hit, enjoying my breakfast in the kitchen. I was having some pancakes, and we uh, heard the plane hit the building. Yeah. Nobody moved from the table, because slow Manhattan is usually very noisy, trucks going by, kind of echoes with the kind of valley effect between the buildings. And uh, my officer who was covering, he was from a different firehouse, he looked up at me and he said, uh, is that normal, that sound for down here? So anyway, like I was saying, Randall, sorry about the uh, emergency <laughs> call, but that happened. Don't be sorry about that. Um, my officer looked at me and he said, is that normal, that sound for down here? And I said, yeah, it's probably truck going by. You know, we hear kind of sounds like that all the time. And with that, a gentleman was in the front having a cigarette, enjoying a beautiful September morning. I uh, had the front doors open, and he ran to the kitchen. He said, a plane just hit the f***ing World Trade Center. And with that, we jumped up from our seats. We ran to the front of the firehouse. The doors were open. It was pitch black outside. It was a beautiful September morning. The sun was up, and it was pitch black outside. The smoke from the Trade Center, from where the plane had hit, was completely blocking out the sun. As I was approaching the front of the firehouse, I could see people cowering in our doorway. They were hiding, they were getting down low, and they were just looking up in fear, and I had no idea what was going on. I assumed it was a small airplane. I, maybe somebody had a heart attack because it, the visibility was excellent. I couldn't think that he accidentally hit the building, but maybe he suffered a heart attack or an ailment and he hit the building. Makes With sense. that, we were ready to respond out. Sean Talon, who was only, uh, he was what we call a probie, probationary firefighter. He had only 11 months on the job, 27 years old former uh, NY, FDNY, EMT, and also a uh, Marine, uh, U.S. Marine Corps. Uh, he was our youngest guy working that day, so I grabbed him. I said, Sean, stay close to me. I said, we're going to see a lot of really bad things today, but we're going to be all right. I pulled out my fire truck. I was the chauffeur, the driver that day. When I got out onto the apparatus floor, I realized we were already running over bodies in the street. People had been blown out from the Trade Center. I don't know if they were from the plane or if they had been from the building, but their bodies were on the you street. You couldn't see them, the smoke was that thick. The, the smoke and debris and everything was falling from the sky and people were cowering on the floor. There were already people that were burned and bleeding in front of the firehouse that were getting hit with debris falling. So in my mind, this was unbelievable, it was surreal. What, what was going on over here? I had no idea what could possibly be happening. It never occurred to me that it might have been a commercial airplane. I looked at my office, I said, these are bodies. And, and to me, it looked like insulation from the building, pink insulation rolled up in the dust. And he said, you got to go. He said, There's nothing we could do for them, but maybe we can help the people in the upper floors of the building. I said, all right, if you don't mind, I have to just walk around and, and check my fire truck while we're working here. I, uh, I pulled out of the, uh, the firehouse, and I made my turn onto West Street, and um, barreling down towards One World Trade Center on West Street, and with that, a gentleman comes out of the building on fire, and he drops right in front of my fire truck. So I slammed on the brakes, and inadvertently, not knowing it at the time, that gentleman saved my life. Again, that's something that I believe that God put in front of me. He stopped me short of going into the Trade Center. I jumped out. I wanted to tend to him right away because of his dire need. His, his body was on fire. He was 
his flesh was dropping to the ground. He looked at me with a blank stare, and my company went up into the building. Uh, so I stayed with him for a few while, a few minutes. I wrapped him with a burn blanket with another firefighter, Terry Rivera, and uh, we put him in an ambulance right away. By the time I had gotten into the Trade Center, my company was already up on the upper floors. I knew I wouldn't be able to catch up with them, and I knew that if there was any kind of trouble that they would come looking for me, so that I decided to stay in the lobby so that they wouldn't come searching for me and I would put their lives at risk. So now I'm in the lobby of the World Trade Center, and believe it or not, in the lobby, there already were burnt bodies from the jet fuel. I didn't know this at the time because, again, I still didn't know it was a commercial they, were airplane. Were these people run down or they'd fallen? These people were in the lobby waiting for the elevators to go to the upper floors. The jet fuel from the plane came down into the lobby, and when the elevator doors opened up, they were immediately hit with a fireball. They were incinerated. So there were bodies all over the floor. And again, I'm looking around. I'm like, God, you know, what, what could be going on here? This is unbelievable. There was no fire when we pulled in. There was water on the floor from the sprinkler system being uh, set off, and uh, there was broken glass on the floor, and there were bodies on the floor. So immediately we went to the, the people that were on the floor. There was a gentleman pushed up against the wall. He was burned. He was already dead. There was a woman. She sat up, and she was trying to speak to me. Her voice, had, her, her throat had closed up. It had swollen closed. And she sat up, and she was trying to get the words, and I said, stay calm. We'll get you out of here. She was nude. Her clothes had burnt off. Her fingertips were gone, they were burned. Her throat had closed up. She laid down and she died right there in front of me. I couldn't do anything to help her, unfortunately. With that, my officer calls me, he says, John, see if you can find out what's going on. I know you're in the lobby. Go out to the outside and look around the perimeter building. See if you can figure out what's happening. So I went to the outside of the building. I looked up, I was in between the two buildings. I made a report, I said, the entire top of the building is on fire. I don't know what we're going to be able to do, but we have to start evacuating these people right now. I went into two World Trade Center. There were people there that were like, well, they're telling us to go back to our desk. I said, get out. Get out of these buildings. We don't know what's going on. Move away from these buildings as quickly as possible. And with that, they just dropped everything in their hands, and they started running out the door. I went back into one World Trade Center, the North Tower, and I was standing in an area with uh, about maybe 40 or 50 firefighters. We were waiting for instructions, what we call a staging area. With that, I heard over a police officer's radio, prepare for impact, a second plane is approaching. I looked at another fireman, I said, we're under attack. He goes, no. I said, oh my God, am I the only one that's not aware that we're under attack? I, I'm, I'm thinking we're dealing with an accident over here and everybody else knows what's going on. Just a cynical fireman, just, you know, typical day's work, yeah, we're under attack, no big deal. But most of the guys were like me, they didn't know what was happening. With that, the second plane hits tower number two, the south tower. I still didn't see the plane, so I still had no idea it was a commercial plane. I felt the impact onto the building. The lights flickered, the building shook. I was like, okay, we're under attack. We just got to get these people out of here. Forget about the fire. People begin to coming down, coming down the stairs in droves. They're panicking, they're bleeding, they're burning. Women are taking their shoes off to be able to run. The floor is covered in water and broken glass. They're ripping their feet to shreds. To me, it was organized chaos. When they saw us, they were able to follow directions. They were listening to us. They were panicking, but at the same time, they had calmed down, and they were listening to what we were saying. We were giving them instructions to head out into the street to get away from the buildings. After only a few minutes realizing the debris falling from the building was actually killing them, people began to jump. Heavy amounts of debris were falling from the building. The people we were sending out onto the street were being hit by debris. So we stopped sending them into the street and we sent them down into the subways. We figured the subway goes about four blocks away. They were able to go into the subway, come up a good four blocks away. They wouldn't be hit by any debris. So we assumed that that was our best bet to try to get people out of there. Were you seeing the jumpers, John? I could feel them. I could hear them landing on the mezzanine above me. Not one at a and time. And you knew that's what it was. But 10 and 20 at a time. They were raining out of the sky. And when their bodies hit, the impact sounded like an explosion. Grace, what did you think? I thought it was the end of the world.